King, excellent Father, King of Kings, omnipotent one, we worship you, your majesty is forevermore. Glorious God, beautiful King, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we gather tonight under your feet to be fed. We ask, oh God, that every one of us will be, will be highly fed and will be, high, will be met at the very point of our needs. Lord Jesus, we pray that you walk in our boats, that as we roar in the boat tonight, Lord God Almighty, come and mix up with us. Come and perfect everything about us concerning tonight's theme, Lord. We ask, oh God, that wherever we are being affected in one way or the other, Lord Jesus, you are the comforter. You will comfort every one of us. And at the, by the end of tonight's program, Father, all the glory, all the honor, all the power, adoration, dominion, shall be ascribed only unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Tonight, once again, we are welcome to the program. As we are acquainted, our theme for tonight is abuse, betrayal, and healing. Abuse, betrayal, and healing. Now, I want to start by saying that abuse is a very terrible evil, and it should never have a place among children of God, among us Christians. It's such an evil that should not be mentioned wherever we children of God we are, praise the Lord. Nobody deserves to be abused because abuse is virtually something that, you know, it means a misuse or mistreatment of virtually anything. It's either you misuse it or mismanage it or mistreat it. So abuse is not, it's not, it's not something that is pleasant. It's not something that we children of God, we are to be uh, involved in. Now, there is, um, there, we have different categories of abuse as many of us will know. We have spiritual abuse, which is the, ab the type of abuse that um, happens in the, in the house of God, among the children of God, you can say, some pastor from pastors, some priests, very popular among the priests, you know, abuse of, of minor, abuse of women, abuse of children, abuse of, you know, different categories. We also, there's also um, physical abuse, which is, you know, traumatic as well. And it's also, it has to do with, you know, with, beating with a lot of um, violence. And there is also domestic abuse, which 
we are going to be more working on more of it as, um, as um, you know, many other. There's also child abuse, there's sexual abuse, there's also um, emotional abuse, which is very, very rampant among many people, especially among couples, among partners, among, um, you know, cohabit people who are cohabiting together, emotional abuse. We can also liken it to be uh, physical, psychological, um, sorry, psychological abuse. There's also financial abuse, if you like to know, because some, 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 some Christians, we abuse our finances, we make, we, we make so many, uh, um, so many uh, unnecessary um, costs on ourselves. There's also modern slavery. There is also self um, neglect. Self neglect, we can liken it to be, you know, something you, you, when, when, when you neglect maybe your health, personal hygiene, maybe there's a, you, you have a prescription, you're supposed to take care of your, you know, your health and you refuse, it's also an abuse. So you can see that abuse is a very broad topic, but by the grace of God, we are going to, God is going to help us tonight, at least to get something out of it in Jesus name, praise God. Now, Abuse can leave a long lasting emotional scars if it's not well handled, which we know that abuse is not, we are not so, no one deserves to go through abuse because it's a very, very terrible situation. And like I said before, abuse happens not only in the home, it happens also at workplace. There are some people that goes through abuse you know at workplace there are some bosses that we call them boss from hell they are they are just at your neck they are always there to uh, either to abuse you abusive words on you or bullying even in schools we see a lot of things going on they are categorized under abuse and um, I will just uh, we want us to open our Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. We just want to read, we want to see what uh, the Word of God says about you know, what can cause abuse. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 says, I read from King James Version, but now ye also. Put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fill the communication out of your mouth. You will agree with me that many of these, um, uh, what we have discussed so far, can be categorized from, I mean, can be brought out from um, the Bible passage we just read, because. Um, if we take care of what the word of God says to us, we will not fall into the trap of either being the perpetrator or being the abuser or being the abused. Uh, sorry, <laughs> praise God. Now, we, are, we, we, we want to go into betrayer. What is betrayer? How can we describe betrayer? Betrayer, Number one can be very painful, can be very traumatic, and simply defined betrayer is a violation. When uh, someone violates a law or a, a laid down agreement, let's just say to break a trust, it can be between husband and wife, it can be also between uh, partners, can be between um, you know, church people, between pastors and members, between family members. Betrayer can also be uh, 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 
between different groups when someone breaks the law or breaks um, breaks uh, the agreement or the covenant. Let's say you know, like it's just like a man and a woman, a husband and wife committing adultery. They have betrayed one oneself, and betrayer can also be that so you you keep secret with somebody, and the person reveal that secret, or they, they someone told a lie against you. It can also be a betrayer because you put so much trust on the person, and now the person have let you down by revealing the secret. Also, infidelity. These days, we see a lot of married couples. They are they they, they are into um, infidelity, and they have the effect of all these things are very very traumatic, especially when such people, the victims, are not so well grounded in the word of God to be able to hold themselves. Now we as children of God, we have also responsibility to be able to, you know, to, to be aware and to be, um, yeah, to be guided in this area. Maybe most of us here, we thank God, we are leaders, we are group leaders, we are church leaders, and then we are also, you know, in the position to be able to let, you know, to give advice. Because um, these days, there's so much tension, I can say so many in our society, in our world today, we all know since the time of coronavirus, so many things have shifted, so many things have changed. There's a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of, um, um, uh, um, a lot of evil things that is going on. Even in the churches today, we find out that so many things, so many people have, you know, have, um, they have lost their faith. And we are talking now as Christians, as children of God, how do we manage? No, don't let me even use the word manage because we, we are not to be to manage any, any sorrow, any pains. How do we get out of it? If any one of us, we experience it or we have gone through it in order not to allow such to go on in our lives. Now, a very great, biblical example of betrayer is uh, what's from um, Judas Iscariot who betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. If we let Jesus say something, um, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17 verse 22, Matthew 17, verse 22. I read quickly from the New King, um, King James Version. Matthew 17, 22 says, and while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, so um, the son of man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. So you can see that the word betrayer has been in existence. So betrayer is something that we need to really um, uh, work on as children of God because it happens every other time. The other time uh, there was a news recently that um, a church treasurer, uh, in South Africa, she was um, in the court and they discovered that she has embezzled all the church money for many years. She had been pretending to, you know, to, uh, to deposit the money in the bank and which she hadn't. And the, the court had to sentence her to, you know, some years. And they said that she betrayed the trust of the church. So there are so many of us, we've been trusted with some responsibilities. And as a result, if we are not 
doing exactly or what we are doing something opposite, then it can be termed as betrayal. So we need to be really careful, especially when we read um, uh, Matthew chapter 22. Let's quickly open to Matthew chapter 22, verse 48. That is Matthew 22, Matthew chapter 22, um, sorry. Matthew 22 verse 48 says, but Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? That is the word of God, direct from the mouth of God. So we as children of God, we need to be very careful of this uh, betrayer. And um, I would just say that the betrayer is, it can lead to depression. If we are being betrayed, um, someone is being betrayed or anxiety, when you see some people going to depression, it can be that they've been betrayed. Uh, we know so many cases of, you know, being jilted, uh, the plans for wedding, and all of a sudden, whether the man or the woman breaks the, the break up and said is not interested again. And when you also see some people going through mental health challenges can also be that they've gone through betrayal or they've been betrayed and um, um, they can't handle it. May God help us. We are here, we are going to discuss also the healing process. If someone goes through that abuse or betrayal, how can one come out of, you know, of the, or, or of, of the problem, praise God. We are running out of time. So I quickly want to go to the healing process. What is the way out? Now, before we go, please let me just note that when anyone goes through betrayal, the first thing on their mind is they want to revenge. It is normal as human beings. We want to revenge, we want to tell the other person that, look, um, I, 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 I too can do my own will hear of some women that when they get to know their husbands uh, have gone out with strange women, they also want to revenge. But no, revenge, by, Jesus said that vengeance, vengeance is his and we should leave everything to him to decide and to you know to work on and then um, there will be great results so let's go to healing process how does someone who have gone through abuse and betrayal how can they handle the situation because we know it can be traumatic bible says that with god all things are possible so i want to believe that there is no situation there is no abuse, there is no betrayal that it is under God's control, there is none. So let us have that in our mind that no matter how bad, you know, we hear here and there, but at the end of it, the consolation is God can do all things and with God, all things are possible. So number one, I will advise or the, yeah, to say that, the such victims of abuse and um, and um, betrayal, they need to reach out. They need to connect to other Christians and confide in people who are of you know higher spiritual level that can help them to go through the process of not being into the group of not going into depression or harming themselves. We hear that some people, they can't handle it. They commit suicide. So many things happen. So, but as children of God, we have a, 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 a higher power 
We have our Lord Jesus Christ who will help us, who can help us out of every problem. Now, I will also say that in spending time, to spend time in God's word is also very, very useful in such a, a, a healing process because we need to remind ourselves of God's love. We need to know that Jesus is always there for us and um, also the victims of abuse and betrayal, they, are, they, are, they must not be isolated. Isolation is never the, the answer to betrayal, it's never the answer to abuse. So they need to speak out and they need to seek for godly counseling for them to be comforted because Bible says, I won't want us to, because my time is all, it's almost over. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three and four, that blessed be the Lord God, our father, who has comforted us. You know, if someone is in that group, it will be very easy. So to find a group where uh, they, 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 they treat those areas uh, of abuse or betrayal, it will really work very well for such people. Now to close because of my time, praise God, no matter how horrible or how painful or how horrific the past or someone have been abused or have been um, betrayed, um, God can bring restoration, God can bring healing, God can bring new life. We see it in Jer Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6, that no matter what we go through. In fact, the Bible says in John 10, 10, it says that the thief have come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life. I have come to give, to save, to heal, and to deliver. And I've come to give you life, you know. So there is life after being abused, no one deserves it. As I've said in the beginning, we, we don't pray for it, but if someone has fallen into that group, there is hope, there is healing, and there is you no know, future. Praise God. God bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Ma. God bless you, Ma. Amen. We have heard from our mommy being a female. So, like I said, we wanted to, we want to have a balance. Although it's a women's conference, but we can't leave the men house. So, so that's how we are going to permit me to welcome Brother Femi Aodele. So let's hear from his own view too. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> or oh, is it afternoon? Well, I am still in the morning here. Yes, sir, um, we understand. <laughs> I have three minutes. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I've been trying to look for how to, uh, of how to send it to everybody. I, I couldn't find how to do that, uh, but that's okay. I'll forward it to Buki and she can send it to everybody. Uh, a lot of what Mami Ulusoya said is uh, a lot of what I'm going to be sharing probably just a different perspective. And I'm sure Pastor Mrs. Abola will be sharing similar things from different perspective. Uh, abuse, betrayal, and healing. Uh, abuse and betrayal is from our sin nature, our sin nature. And uh, there's actually there are two scriptures that God specifically spoke to men, I believe it's applicable to uh, women as well, but it was these two scriptures are spoken to men that if we abuse or betray our first love, that God will not answer our prayers. Uh, I actually take these two scriptures just literally, uh, Malachi 2.14 and 1 Peter 3.7, I take them literally. I don't speak when Ola and I are not in good terms. That's just my own personal uh, uh, personal thing. Uh, to abuse, I think mommy Ulusoya said this, to abuse something, you can abuse 
in an inanimate object or you can abuse a human being is to use improperly maltreat to injure or to do something excessively uh when it comes to marriage uh <laughs> the most common form of abuse uh, uh, uh is the emotional and the psychological abuse uh which is really uh using words to intimidate you know when the bible talks about the tongue and psychologically putting somebody down uh, there's actually a scripture i believe it's uh, ephesians 5 that says you should love your spouse as yourself i struggle with that verse for a long time until i realized in counseling that a lot of people have very low self-esteem of themselves. And such people, they, they emotionally, but most importantly, psychologically abuse their spouse because they don't, they don't know who they are and they transfer, they project their own lack of uh, self-esteem on their spouse. Uh, physical abuse is what is more known, what is people know more. Uh, but abuse is, uh, uh, in marriage, is emotional, psychological, uh, physical. Uh, but Mielusa, I mentioned spiritual abuse when it comes to church setting. Uh, but spouses can also psychologically abuse. I know many spouses who use scripture to, to intimidate their spouse. I, in fact, that's very, very common. Uh, the Bible said, the Bible said, I, the Bible said, I am the man, uh, bring your body now because your body is my body. You know, those type of uh, uh, wrong quote of scripture. I have seen men, uh, if uh, uh, Anna called, uh, is he Anna or Sarah, they called Abraham Lord. And the wife too answered that, uh, uh, did, uh, did, have you done to me what Abraham did to Sarah? So different types of things. So that's that's when we go into psychological uh, abuse. Now, <laughs> emotional abuse. Uh, many people use, uh, oh, I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to divorce you. Very small fight. They are, they are saying, I'm going to divorce you. Any small thing. And then they use scripture uh, totally out of context. They will quote scripture a lot. Uh, or they just, they just, you know, I, 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 I'm trying not to use people's example because I don't know who is on here, but, <laughs> uh, but I, I can tell you that I've seen many cases where people just basically, especially if their spouses stay at home or, or, or if they have the dominant finance, uh, and they use it as an intimidation tactic or put that person's down self-esteem uh, uh, or, or again, those type of things. Physical abuse uh, used to be common, especially in the African setting, uh, uh, but by God's grace, um, I, I think it's going away gradually. Uh, it is still there, it is still there, uh, but people uh, still do it. I, I know somebody told me, uh, I didn't beat her, I just slapped her. <laughs> and uh, so so he's still there uh i remember a couple here in the u.s uh the man was trying to grab the phone from the wife and the wife happened to be light-skinned and in trying to grab this phone she, he pressed her and she called 911 and when the police came uh, they were going to throw him in jail uh, but she was lucky that he was lucky that day because I was, the wife also called me and I happened to know the policeman that came. So, uh, I, I told him I'm the, I'm their uncle. So, uh, that saved his behind from going to jail that night. So we have to be careful with, uh, <coughs> with physical. Don't, uh, don't even try to take her cell phone. Just leave her alone. If she takes your cell phone, uh, by the way, what are you doing with your cell phone? And she doesn't have uh, the password. That's another story. Uh, 
So, so physical abuse is common, but I'm, I'm hoping that more and more that is not, we're not doing that anymore. Now, people who abuse, uh, they don't fall from trees. They don't, they are born by people. Uh, uh, one of the things that we have found in sociology and science is that um, uh, people with different types of personalities. So for those of you who probably are not aware, every human being, we have one of three personalities. It's one of three. We have aggressive personality, passive aggressive personality, and passive personality traits. These are personality traits. And each one of us uh, belong to one. So I'm, I'm what they call passive aggressive personality. Uh, I can tell you that uh, because she's my aburo, that the person hosting us, Buki, is passive aggressive. Uh, and uh, I think I they will agree with me. Uh, so we all have this personality. Each personality has strength, each personality has weaknesses. Uh, but one of the things they have found out is that the people that physical abuse are common in their relationship are people with aggressive personalities. Uh, when both of them have aggressive personalities, those are the people that they call the pastor at 2 a.m. I'm gonna kill her. Well, I'm gonna kill him too. Pastor, you better come here now and things like that. So they do a lot of things aggressively. Uh, also people, when an aggressive man marries a passive woman, also most of the time, it's abuse can occur. Uh, when an aggressive woman marry a passive man, there's a lot of nagging. So nature, uh, nature or personality trait is one of the ways that people have, uh, uh, people become aggressive. Another way people become aggressive is nurturing. Nurturing is what you are taught growing up. So a lot of people uh, grow up in a home where they saw their, parent, their father abuse their mother or they saw their mother abuse their father uh, in different ways, without emotional abuse, psychological abuse. Many people think it's only men that abuse, uh, but women, women, a lot of women abuse. Uh, I have dealt with many cases where women use psychology abuse. I know a woman for many years who will just lambast the husband, your mate, look at your mate, uh, look at you, what are you doing? Look at, is that what your mates are doing to the point that the man almost committed suicide? Uh, uh, but thank God, thank God. Uh, they are still married, they are doing very well now actually because God touched our heart, so there is healing. So, but basically, I just wanted to establish that um, aggression or, 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 or different types of abuse uh, is based on uh, our nature and nurture, what we have, what we personality traits and how we're taught growing up, and both can change. So we'll, we'll, we'll come to that later. Uh, betrayal. I think Mommy Ulusa has said this. Is when trust is broken or when agreed or passive expectations are not met. In sociology, there's something called unrealistic expectation, where you go into a marriage, you've read too much Mills and Boons, and uh, what is all those uh, novel that you read that your husband will just come on a white horse and sweep you away. And he doesn't come on a, in a, on a horse, he comes on a donkey. Eh? Sometimes he even comes with his legs, so if he doesn't have a car. And so there is a lot of unrealistic expectation. As I've also realized that a lot of people marry somebody in church. And just because they marry that person in church, they have this expectation <laughs> that because he's the choir leader, that, uh, that he doesn't uh, uh, do anything. One of the common things I, I notice is that when people are dating each other, they don't fight in front of each other. Eh? Work is so, but when they now 
uh, marry, they now fight in, in front of each other. And the other person is like, ah, don't you see that I'm in the room? So there's a lot of unrealistic <laughs> expectations. And there's like, I think like Mommy Lusanya said, there's also secrets. When you start to keep secret, uh, again, I've dealt with so many of that, uh, where a lot of thing was not said, like somebody who had a child and did not tell this, the husband, or like somebody who has had an abortion, you know, if you had an abortion, you had an abortion, just let the other person know. Uh, and that's created problem in the future uh, to the point, you know, so, so many secrets that came out. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so it's uh, a betrayal is also when that person uh, betray trust. Adultery is a very common, very common uh, uh, betrayal. Uh, uh, adultery in men is actually very different from adultery in women, believe it or not. Uh, most men, most men, adultery for them is physical. They just want to have sex. And after sex, that's it. They go to the next woman. Uh, but most women, adultery is more emotional. They, because they don't have connection at home, they result to having connection or communication with somebody else on their job. Uh, so it is, it's very important that uh, uh, we, we understand that we don't allow the enemy to, to, to do that. There are many forms of betrayal, like I said, uh, uh, secrets, secrets, uh, you know, let's keep secrets secret and things like that. Disappointment from unmet needs. You expect your husband to do certain things for you. And he or she, your husband is not meeting that need or your wife is not meeting that need. You know, sex, sex is a big one. Some, some people have very high sexual appetite uh, and, uh, and, their husband, and their wife is not delivering. Uh, and th this one is actually very common. When a woman gets to their 40s and they start to have low estrogen, their sexual appetite actually increases. And most husbands at that time, their sexual appetite is decreasing. So here comes the man taking rain check all the time. So that could be uh, on met need. Oh, sorry, rain check in America means the man says, oh yeah, toba dollar, toba dollar. So, <laughs> so there is adultery, uh, there is damaging. When, when somebody starts to share family secrets with other people, uh, so yeah. Just like abuse, betrayal also hurts. It's very, very devastating spiritually. Uh, actually, most people who leave a church, who leave when they are mad at a church, they leave because of, uh, of betrayal. Uh, the pastor didn't say this right. The person didn't say this right. Just emotional, emotional pain. <clears throat> so how do we heal? Uh, so... The first thing to, to understanding uh, abuse and betrayal is that it's very, very emotional, very super, super duper emotional. And emotional healing takes a long time to heal. Takes a long time to heal. Um, statistically, based on data, it's about two years. If trust is breached for whatever reason, Trust is breached, secret came out, abuse, adultery. Statistically, they say about two years before that. Uh, if th that, that two years is even taken into consideration that the, the abuser repented. That is taken into consideration that the abuser has repented and healing has started. Uh, so it takes a long time. Uh, <laughs> it's also very good. It's also healthy when the abuser repents. When the abuser repents, what is repent? Repentance, uh, many years ago, I was taught this. Uh, repentance is, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I won't do that again. Lord, I am sorry. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I won't do that again. 
uh, is healthy when that person does that. But most times the abuser don't even repent. They don't repent. So what do you do in a case where the person that is hurting you is not repenting? Uh, 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 what you do is that you understand biblical principle that forgiveness, you are not forgiving somebody because of them. It helps when they repent and ask for forgiveness. But your, your forgiveness, your forgiving somebody is not based on them repenting. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You forgive and you move on because <coughs> uh, it is good for you. Unforgiveness or anger uh, or lack of healing uh, when you are offended affect you spiritually, it affects your spiritual life, it affects you emotionally, and it affects you physically. Um, I can tell you scientific ways where it affects you. Emotionally, your body starts to release too, too much epinephrine and no epinephrine. Uh, uh, and these are hormones that you don't need in large quantity. If you have them in too much quantity, they, they, rest, they, they cause problems to your veins or nerves or whatever doctors call it. Hopefully there are doctors here who can correct me. And, and they constrict your muscles and your eyes become bloodshot. Uh, and they also dry your, your joints. Uh, they dry your joints and uh, uh, so I, I try, you can get arthritis from it. If some arthritis are genetic, but some are also caused because of too much uh, epinephrine and no epinephrine. So spiritually, you are not praying. So the reason you forgive, the reason you want healing uh, is, is in spite of that person. Uh, and healing starts mentally. I'm choosing to forgive. And then you go through an emotional process, uh, emotional process where you need a counselor, you need somebody to help you. Now, depending on the reason for abuse, uh, some, some betrayal or some abuse can be deep. Uh, after 22 years of full-time ministry around the world, I, I can tell you that I have seen my share of, uh, of very deep uh, betrayal or very deep abuse. I'm talking super duper ones uh, <laughs> that even me, sometimes as a counselor uh, or as the pastoral person, I give up. Uh, I, I do give up. Uh, but in such cases, that is where God stands up. Uh, so uh, pray for that person. Change for yourself. Uh, and many times also the abuser, the, like we said earlier, the person doing the abusing, the person doing the uh, betrayal, Sometimes it is because of what they learned growing up. One of the things I have learned, I've seen many times, is that a lot of those who abuse and a lot of those who betray, when you trace their background, you will see a, you will see a trend in their family. And it is not some people, and I'm sure many Nigerians are here, it is not so much because of family cause, you know, Nigerians always, or Africans always talk about family costs. Uh, I'm not saying there's no family cause, but Philippians 2, the moment you say in the name of Jesus, family cause is broken. The biggest thing that we don't deal with is what is called learned behavior. Learned behavior. When a child grew up uh, with your daddy bringing girlfriend home all the time, subconsciously, you are learning it subconsciously. Uh, kids learn more subconsciously than, they learn, than what you teach them. Uh, so many times behavior, the behavior pattern is repeated. That is why many of us said, I will never be my mother. And we end up behaving the exact same way as our mother uh, because of learned behavior. So what we need to do is especially this for those of you who are not married yet, find out those type of nurturing and help your spouse. Talk to talk about it with God. 
the only change that I know is, uh, is the Bible. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> there are also psychological counseling, okay, who, that can help you tease out the past and help you replace it with God. But what the Bible says categorically is be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, if you detect a pattern in your life, uh, if you detect a pattern, and all of us have these nasty patterns, by the way, just so you know. Some of us, our pattern is secret, keeping secret. Some of us, we believe when our grandmother told us that uh, you don't tell your husband everything. You tell him a little and you take the rest and put it in your pocket. Some of us, we believe when our grandmother tell us that you don't share everything with your wife. You know, you, you share some and then you keep some. That is what makes you a man. You know, those are or the reason a woman does not have uh, Adam's apple is because she cannot keep secret. You have to transform by the renewing of your mind. Change those thinking. Change your learned behavior. That is why, that's what Paul talks about in Romans 12 and to the church in Corinth when he says, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And lastly, I will end with this. <clears throat> I have also discovered that true change <laughs> starts with repentance. Uh, one of the things I've learned many years in doing ministry is that many people want to change. Many people really, really want to change but they want to change because they want to have peace. Unfortunately, such a change does not last, uh, does not last. But the change that lasts is the change that, that, that happened to David in Psalm 51, when he wrote Psalm 51, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I won't do it again. Uh, you know, create in me a new heart, oh Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. That is the change that lasts, the change that that person realizes it is not my mother, it is not my father, but me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Uh, the lasting change is when each person change, not pointing fingers. Let me say to this person now, you cannot change your spouse. You cannot change your spouse. Your spouse is the only one that can change himself or herself with the help of the Holy Spirit. I have a book, uh, it's no longer in print, it's called The Enemy Within. I spent five years trying to change my wife. And what God did for me was not to change my wife, but to change me. I went to him for him to change my wife, but at the end of the day, he changed me. Uh, so how I react to my wife is now what change. It's when my reaction to her change, then she change towards me. So many times the healing is in spite of the other person. The other person is also doing their own healing. You are doing your own healing. And it's very important that in those two years of 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 you feeling, is this true, is this not true, to give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Uh, no counselor can tell you that your spouse has truly, truly repented or changed. Their change, their repentance is seen in their behavior. So change that is based on logic does not last, only change that is based on God. So there is healing, healing together, but healing individually. Repentance uh, from the person that is an offender uh, and uh, uh, a benefit of the doubt from the person receiving it and with the help of the Holy Spirit and also heal other humans around you. Thank you very much. I will forward this to... Uh, uh, to uh, somebody else is uh, speaking while I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. thank you very much. I'm trying to stop my sharing yeah, and give yeah. it back to. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much, sir. And need I say, I don't know if it's possible. Is it possible for you to have that as a book, sir? I think it should have a wider coverage. And the same thing goes for Mommy Lucia. It just dropped in my spirits now. I don't know if it's possible, my if 
you can have what you have spoken to us today in a book. If you give me, I can equally share on my platform. Now, right now, we are going to move. Um, okay, um, Brad David and Sister Janet in the UK, don't worry. <laughs> You're, we're still going to come to that uh, question and answer section. But right now, we are going to be taking um, worship as well from our dear ministers, Pastor Oye and my dear sister as well, Sister Mayo Banks. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If you have any question before they are true, please jot them down. And if you don't um, want to make your question public or your comment public, you can write to me on my WhatsApp or the private room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus for the powerful word that we've heard this evening. We just want to sing the songs that the Lord, whoever has gone through abuse, betrayal, that the Lord will heal, that the Lord will touch you, and the Lord will bring healings to your healing to your heart, to your soul. In the name of Jesus. I will never be the same.
just love this club. <laughs> and just takes me. God bless you so much. We are grateful. Amen. Um, it's time to take our questions and answers. And like we said, if you don't feel comfortable talking about your question, you can send them to my, send them privately to the chat room. I can I mean, help you say them hard. But if you feel like you want to ask, please feel free to also ask the questions. You can raise your hand or signify by talking or muting yourself, then we'll know you want to talk. Okay, Pastor Oye, we can build the cat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I have this question, um, like our mommy shared and like um, Mr. Wodele also shared with us, you know, this issue of abuse is, is a very, very serious issue, you know. Uh, my question is this, why is it that so many, like, like the victims, people that are, that are suffering from one form of abuse or the other, why is it that sometimes they are not like ready to come out of it? Like we on the outside, we see what is happening and we are trying to let them know that this is not right. This is abuse. You have to do something. You have to get out of this. But sometimes it's like they are just comfortable in that abusive relationship, in that abusive marriage. They are not willing to make any move, to take any step to come out of it. What's, what, what, why is it so? And what's the solution to, to that kind of situation? I, let, I'll, I'll go quick, quickly. Uh, abuse is, uh, ab for, let me give, in Africa for a long time, abuse was accepted. It was an accepted cultural norm uh, because men dominated because of money, because of financial wealth. So that was an accepted thing. And society basically told the woman to stay in there. Uh, so that was, that, that, that's one. Two, ask, answering your question directly. Number two, there is something uh, called in psychology called Stockholm syndrome. Uh, basically, what it is is that when people are emotionally uh, are, are together, that this is why for people who are not married, please do not have sex before marriage. If you do, you are building an emotional uh, serious database that it becomes difficult to separate him becomes very difficult. So when a couple has invested a lot, sometimes the Stockholm syndrome thing kicks in, which is they, see, they don't see the abuse as abuse anymore. They don't see the abuse as abuse anymore. They just see it as normal. Like, I know a, a grandmother who told the daughter, ah, kilo she fun, she boko no any. So basically, to such a person, and this happened here in America. So to, to such a person, what is the big deal? What is the big deal? Uh, so, and then the, 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 the abused person is also now have accepted that. But everybody outside is seeing it, but they can't see it because they've accepted that as the new norm, as their life, as their, you know, uh, 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 that's codependency. There's something also called codependency, where they now codependent on that abuser. Or there's also this pressure in Nigeria or Africa generally, where uh, if I leave this abusive person, it will affect my ministry. It will affect my, uh, it will affect my, uh, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? People, it will affect my status in society. 
So people would not want to hang out with me if I'm a divorced woman or if, if I'm a pastor and I'm divorced. So the reason is so much, but Stockholm syndrome, somebody said I should explain myself, is basically somebody uh, uh, who is used, who has seen the abuse as the new norm. That is, the, that is how best I can. Uh, uh, then cultural acceptance, then emotional attachment. So I hope I answered that question that it just directly. Is it okay, sir? Uh, then the second part of the question is, okay. so how can they come out of it? How can they come out? It yes. takes God. <laughs> it takes God, which is when I was speaking, I, I spoke about the healing process. And in that healing process, many people they trust have to be around them. When people are vulnerable, uh, uh, when people are vulnerable, they cannot see very well. They need people around them that they trust. Uh, for people who are getting married, there is something called uh, uh, love is blind. The, the, the place where love is blind came from is actually a concept of you can see, but you still cannot see because of the emotional, uh, because of the emotional thing. What is important is have people around you who can help you who can help you shake it out of you, basically in love, however they want to do. That is what is called intervention. You have to intervene. And sometimes it's difficult because that person is so codependent that they, they don't even want your, they even will fight you trying to intervene. Uh, but it depends on how close the person is to you uh, uh, that you intervene. For me, I try to intervene more when there's physical abuse. I always recommend separation, but uh, a, a psychological and emotional abuse is very difficult because you, you don't see the scars physically, but at least you still tell the person, you still try and force separation, but it depends on that person. But that person needs somebody around them. They need a strong person around them, maybe siblings, maybe pastor, somebody around them that can say for two months, you need to separate from, from this. You need to be away from this. Yeah, praise the Lord. With help, <laughs> hallelujah. Go on, sir. No, I, I just wanted to add that separation with help. Separation without a program of healing is just living apart. If there's separation, there has to be a process in place. So, sorry about that. No problem, sir. The Jamie Sib, I think before we went on the short break, you were going to say something. You raised your hand. Zebra David or Sister Janet, you wanted to say something. Are you there? Hmm. Do we have any other question or comments before we move to the next thing? Um, I want to ask a question. Okay. Um, um, Brafemi talked about betrayal as um, expectations not met. How do we avoid this um, assumed expectation not leading into betrayal? You know, a case where one partner is expecting something that is um, not agreed on or that will not come to fruition at that moment. How does one stop that expectation from moving to betrayal? So, uh, thank you very much, my brother. The most people, uh, and I want to carefully use the word most, a lot of women have a lot of expectations, uh, whether realistic or not. You know, most women imagine how their wedding will look like. They have a plan for the wedding. Most guys don't care what the wedding look like. 
they just want to wear a suit and whatever. But it is, it is women that want the day to be certain way, the cake, the dress. So those are expectations that sometimes can be met or not. Also in marriage, a lot of people have, or women have this expectation of what their wedding night will look like. You know, they, they, they have not had sex all their life and then they wait till this first night and then the man becomes a dot. You know, he, he, he hasn't even touched them. He has ejaculated and it's like, oh my God, is this what I waited for? So what, so, so there is, and I'm using that as an example because those are common things. Sometimes a lot of women have the expectation that the way my father behaved when they knew their father. Remember most girls, they knew their father when the man was now a good man. They didn't know him in his early days. So they, they had this expectation of their husband who is just learning the ropes to be their father from day one. The way you overcome expectation issues is communication, communication. Just because I have the title of a pastor does not mean that I am, going, I am not going to use bad words. <laughs> Just because I'm a pastor does not mean I'm going to say, let us pray every time. Just because, so those are realistic expectations. Like I am going to love you, but it's going to be gradual. I have been married 30 years. The way I loved Ola 30 years ago is not the way I love her now. Uh, it's different. Uh, and now I know a lot of our expectation. Now I'm able to meet a lot of our expectation. Uh, and now she also has expectation of me. L let me give you an example of expectation. Uh, Ola will always, in the, in the early years of our marriage, one of the things she always fights me is whenever something excited, exciting happened, I am not happy. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not happy? Because I'm not reacting the way you react doesn't mean I'm not happy. Because for her, when something is happening, you know, something exciting, a child, a car, a house, she's very excited. Everybody can see her excitement. Oh, <laughs> me, I'm not excited. I, you know, I don't, you know. For me, I'm already looking at the next thing. You buy a car now, I'm thinking of how much I'm going to pay off that car so that I can buy the next one. That is where my head is. My head is not in the excitement of, of now. So for me, my excitement, the time, what excites me is very, very little. But now though, now that I'm getting old, I'm having low testosterone, I am crying a little bit more. But, uh, <laughs> but that is, uh, but, but those are examples. So the, the way you co overcome it is communication. Communication. So I hope I answered the question. Did he, did he ask? Yeah. Yes, you did. Thank you. Hmm. Ah, that is in the household. <laughs> that you're loose here. I can see your hands raised. Go ahead, sir. Yes, this is him. Amen. Um, from where I'm talking from, the Bible says, and I don't have uh, much opportunity to participate. Um, just one area that is important to me, I'm talking from East Africa, Uganda. Um, our pastor, Mr. Femi Awadeli said that uh, you cannot change your wife, your wife cannot change you. Everybody has to change himself or herself. That is quite clear. And that area is very, very important to me that from his own personal experience i would i would love to talk to him personally because i'm just here in second time the time it was a little bit often i really enjoyed that uh, uh, his visitation and uh, what he taught us that time so uh, as i said that uh, because of the situation of the area where i am I cannot really participate, but I just put that question and I would love such uh, a program to come again. Or oh, personally, I wish to talk to my, our dear pastor, our daily in America, 
uh, personally, if I have the opportunity, then I'm back to Germany. Uh, Daddy Ulusoya, sir, all your children have my number. <laughs> so uh, all your children have my number. So to, to ask them, either Buki or, or Mayowa, or, okay. or they, that's, they will that's... give you my number, sir. <laughs> Thank you, okay, sir. sir. Yes, as sir. I said, I cannot persuade so much. You can hear okay. that. Yeah. yeah, we understand, sir. We know you're on a mission to Uganda. Thank you very much, sir, for creating time to join. God oh, bless you, sir. Amen. In the absence of that, I would like to welcome. Pastor Lola Agbola for the prayer section. Mommy, are you ready? Yes, good evening, everyone. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. I thank God for this time. I want to thank God for the invitation. Thank you, my sister and my brother. I appreciate you. God bless you all. And um, I want to thank God for all the words that has been spoken by the speakers. Mommy Olusoya, I really like what you said. We thank God for this abuse, betrayal, and uh, healing. Hello, I'm sorry you might be hearing an echo for the background. Uh, it's like um, the network is bad. So I'll be switching between my husband's phone and my phone. Yes. I hope we don't mind. Okay, hopefully we'll get it clearer because of the, of the echo. I hope we are comfortable with that. I'm really sorry. So I'll be switching between those phones. It's, it's fine by me. I, I don't know if others. I have anything to say. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. One of the phones. Or disconnect the audio, right? Disconnect the audio. Disconnect the audio from one phone. Okay. Yeah, I think that's here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. I've lost on that. Okay. So I'm so sorry about that. Uh, we are going to be praying. And. Uh, we're going to be praying and uh, because whether you like it or not, both the abuser, the betrayer, and those who, who have been betrayed, we need, to, we need prayers for them because uh, the person that has been betrayed is in pain. The person that has been abused is in pain. And the person has been abused, abusing someone, and the person who betrays others also needs healing. And uh, so we are going to be praying. But before we pray, let's just go ahead and thank God. Because not everybody has this opportunity even to stand and hear all this. So many people want to be free from abuse. And um, they can't get that help. So let's go ahead and thank God and say, Father, we thank you for this words that we have heard today. Father, thank you because we are hearing this word so that healing can come even into our lives, into the lives of people around us. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for this day. Thank you for those that you have used even to talk to us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Daddy, for always being there for us, for giving us words that will encourage us, words that will heal us. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We say be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Right now, we're going to be praying for as many that have been abusing people. For as many that have been betraying people, they need help. They need a lot of help. Some are being abusing others because they have been abused all their life. 
they have seen abuse even if, as they were growing up. So we're going to pray and say, Father, touch the lives of your children. As many that are abusing their spouse, abusing children, abusing their staff, abusing anyone or any substance or anything whatsoever, Father, touch them. Father, remove the cause of abuse in their life. Father, Lord, touch them, touch their lives. Father, that abuse will not be a portion in their life anymore in the name of Jesus. Father, they need healing. Heal them, O oh Lord. Father, heal them. Heal them, Lord. You said you do not want the dead of sinners. Father, heal the swans, O oh Lord. Take away the sin of abusing others even from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, touch them, O oh Lord. Father, touch them, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, touch them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. He said that for in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He said, if a man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away and all things have become new. We're going to pray for this one. And we're going to say, Father, let them meet with you, O Lord. And as they meet with you, give them newness of life. Give them a new life. Give them a new beginning, O oh Lord. As you touch their lives, Father, give them a new beginning. Father, give them a new heart. Give them a new beginning. Give them a new heart. Give them a new beginning, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, touch them in a new way. Father, breath of, touch them and even give them a new life. Father, Lord, that abuse will be uprooted from their life. Father, that they will no more betray people, Lula, but they will serve you all the days of their life. Father, touch them in no small way, O Lord. Father, touch every abuser, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. They also need healing. We're going to say, Father, heal them, even spirit, soul, and body, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal this to your children. Spirit, soul, and body in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal them, O Lord. Heal them, O Lord. In any way they have been abused by themselves, Father Lord, heal them. Psychologically, heal them, O Lord. Sell your healing power upon them, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal them, O Lord. Father Lord, heal them, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then there is the abuse. So many are in pain. So many don't know where to go to. They are on the brink of committing suicide. There was a case that was just reported a day or two ago. A young lady, she was doing well at her place of work. Her, her fiance just proposed to her. And she had an inside argument with the fiance. And she stopped the, the vehicle on Third Mainland Bridge, and she jumped into the lagoon. Well, nobody knows what happens. But probably she had been going through one form of the abuse on the other. So we're going to pray for this one. And we're going to say, Father, as many that have been abused, Father, send your healing balm upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, send your healing balm upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal them, spirit, soul, and body in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal them, spirit, soul, and body in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal your children in the mighty name of Jesus. As many as are at the point of committing suicide, Father, heal them. Heal them, O oh Lord. Turn their hearts back unto you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal everyone that has been abused. And as many that have been betrayed, Father, heal them too, O Lord. Heal them, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the one that can heal. They are the great healer. Father, touch their lives, O Lord. Heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're still praying. 
We are going to pray and say, Father, and say, Father as many that have been abused or have been betrayed, Father, give them a heart to forgive their betrayers and their abusers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray that the God, Lord, will give them the grace able to forgive everyone who has abused them, who has even betrayed them. Father, heal, give every abused person the heart of forgiveness, O Lord. Cause them to forgive their betrayers. Cause them to forgive their abusers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, cause them to forgive, O Lord. Forgive them the grace to forgive. Grace to forgive even everyone that has abused them or betrayed them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give them grace, O Lord, even to forgive. Father, Lord, give them grace to forgive and uh, the abusers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give them the grace to forgive the abusers, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised. And mommy, I said one thing that most people who are abused or are betrayed get to a point where they want to revenge. Revenge is not of it. It says we should uh, leave everyone to God and to Him, and He will fight for us. So we're going to cry unto the Lord today and say, Father, as many as are planning even to retaliate or to even Go after their betrayers or abusers. Father, touch them, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, touch them, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, touch them, O oh Lord. He says, vengeance is yours, O oh Lord. Father, let this ones hand their abusers over to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace, O oh Lord, even to it, not to revenge. Father, give unto them, O oh Lord. Father, grace not to revenge. Give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace not to revenge. Even for, of their, for their evil acts, oh Lord, Father, please give unto your children. Go, oh Father, Lord, give them the grace not to revenge, oh Lord. Father, give them grace not to revenge even against their abusers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, grace not to revenge over their abusers. Give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, grace, O oh Lord, even not to give revenge, O oh Lord, give unto them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to pray because um, whether you like it or not, some people forgive, but they never forget. And sometimes this brings back pains into the hearts of the victims. There are some, the scars are there for them to see. But it is God that heals perfectly and removes every scar. So we are going to pray that, Father, the grace even to forget, give unto every victim in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to forgive and forget, Father, give unto your victim, unto these victims in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that have scars, Father, make them whole, O Lord. Let the scars, oh Lord, they will visually away in the name of Jesus. Let it fade away in the mighty name of Jesus. Every scar in the life of your children, Father, Lord, let them fade away in the name of Jesus. Cause your children to forgive and forget totally in the mighty name of Jesus. Let, it for, let, it, let them forgive and forget totally in the name of Jesus. And let evil, evil cease even from their heart, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We're going to be praying also, because whether you like it or not, abuse for some, especially in Nigeria, is a curse that has been placed in, upon families. And it goes on and on and on and on. And we're going to pray and say, Father, let abuse cease from every family in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the spirit of abuse cease from our families in the mighty name of Jesus. 
let us see it from the from the families of people that we know and are close to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the spirit of abuse, oh Lord, let it be destroyed in the lives of men and women in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let the spirit of abuse, let it be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Most times, abuse is prevalent in marriages. So many people are suffering so many things. Some are suffering emotional abuse, some physical abuse, and both of them appear as if nothing has happened. So we're going to be praying for marriages. And we're going to say, Father, in any marriage where there is abuse, Father, let your healing bank flow through this marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Every marriage that has a crack as a result of abuse or betrayal, Father, let your healing bank flow through this marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your healing bank flow through those marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let your healing bank flow through the marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal every crack in the marriages, O oh Lord. Every crack in any marriage, Father, heal it, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, heal, heal, heal in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, heal every marriage, O oh Lord, that has a crack in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to be praying for marriages. And we're like the wedding at Canaan of Galilee. The Lord gave them new wine. And what would have turned to a disaster begin a time of celebration for the couple. So we're going to cry unto the Lord and say, Father, pour new wine into our marriages. As many marriages are suffering from abuse or betrayal, Father, pour new wine into the marriages, O Lord. Father, pour new wine into our marriages, O Lord. Father, Lord, pour new wine into our marriages, O Lord. Pour new wine, O Lord, into our marriages, Lord. Father, Lord, let your new wine flow even into our marriages, O Lord. Father, Lord, new wine brings joy. Father, Lord, pour new wine into our marriages, O Lord. It brings breakthrough, O oh Lord, in marriages, O oh Lord. Father, it brings prosperity. Father, Lord, bring new wine into our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For us to have good marriages or to have good new union, we need to speak with one voice. We need to be in unity, in one heart. We are going to pray and cry and say, Father, let unity be our portion in our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let there be unity in our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says that two shall become one. Father, let every marriage, every couple speak with one voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every voice, oh Lord, even be in marriages, be in one accord in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And we're going to pray, and we're going to say, Father, let divorce cease even from marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. As many as are on the brink of divorcing themselves, Father, let that cease, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the thought of divorce cease, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray. That divorce will not be the portion of marriages anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as many that are divorced, Father, Lord, there's nothing you cannot do. Father, bring every couple together, even as you designed, even in the, from the beginning, that two shall become one. Father, bring couples together in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bring couples together as one in the mighty name of Jesus. And let divorce cease in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let divorce cease in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let divorce cease from our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let divorce cease, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us not have divorces in our homes and in our marriages again in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. We are going to pray for the host of this meeting, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Adekoya. And we're going to pray that Father will renew their strength, even as they have set up this ministry, that they will continue to touch life. They will continue to do the will of God. They will not fail God. Let's go ahead and pray even for this ministry and for the host of the program, the head of the program, that God will continue to uplift them and continue to shower his blessings upon them. In all that they do, his hand will be mighty upon their life. They will not fail God. They will not fall. They will not falter. The Lord will continue to strengthen them in and out in the mighty name of Jesus. That it shall be well with the ministry. It shall be well with their marriage. It shall be well with everything that concerns them. And all shall be well even with them and their children till the end of time in the name of Jesus. Let's pray most importantly that they will make heaven. They will not miss it on that last day in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. I'm sure one of us, one or two of us, we know one victim or another who has been involved in abuse or betrayal. I want us to take time out and just pray quietly for this once, even right now. Just mention their names and ask that God will specifically, by reason of this program, touch them, heal them, <coughs> and even, even attend to their even prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray for as many that we know that have been abused. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for this day because this is the day you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the words of the, from your beautiful people, uh, the, uh, speakers who have spoken concerning abuse, betrayal, even and the healing process. Father, Lord, we want to thank you for using them. We want to thank you even for the word that have come through them. Father, we say, may your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we commit as many that have been abusing people abuse and betraying others. Father, Lord, we commit them into your hands. My Father and my God, we pray that you will touch this ones in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that they will know you. They will come to know you. And as they know you, Father, you will touch them and you will heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. As many as are under a curse, a curse that has made them to continually abuse, even in the, that, that be, continually made them to be subject to abuse in their generation. Father, Lord, we break that curse right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, we say they are set free in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, as you meet with them, oh Lord, we cry unto you. Father, you will give them newness of life, oh Lord. You will transform their lives for good in the mighty name of Jesus. They also need healing because they have gone through so much. Father, heal them, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And let them be perfected in you in the name of Jesus. For every victim of abuse, for every victim of betrayal, 
Father, we cry out for healing for this ones in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we cry out for healing for this ones in the name of Jesus. Heal them perfectly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. As many that are at the point of committing suicide, Father, redeem them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Turn their hearts back unto you, O Lord. Amen. And Father, Lord, we pray that you will give them the grace, grace, O Lord, even to forgive and to forget in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Give them grace to forgive and forget in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as many that have, have scars as a result of what they have gone through, Father, you are the balm of Gilead. As you heal, O oh Lord, make them whole, O oh Lord. And Amen. let every scar, O oh Lord, that is upon their lives, O oh Lord, let them be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My Father and my God. Amen. Onwards, they, will never, they will seize, O oh Lord, even from Amen. holding to the past, O oh Lord. And you will give them newness of life in the name of Jesus. We commit marriages into your hands. Father, pour new wine even into every marriage head right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As many marriages that have one crack or the other, Father, let there be healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Father, let divorces from our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, for your children that you are using, Father, continue to uphold them, continue to be with them. Father, Lord, grant them, O oh Lord, victory even in this ministry work in the name of Jesus. And on the last day, let them not fail you, O oh Lord. Take all the glory because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, mommy. Thank you so much. A oh, powerful section. Thank you. I can see that um, there's a uh, Mr. Peter James has been asking question here in the comments in the chat um, room. Thank you, sir, Brother Femi. You've been answering his questions. <laughs> I I don't know. Does I don't know if he wants to go further with asking you more questions. What do we do, Brother Peter James? I am more than happy to answer question if people have questions. Okay, so what do we do, sir? Because we're trying to round up. Yeah. We can ask, we can ask, we can ask people to give two questions before we round up. Okay, do we have, do we have anyone who wants to ask, ask any question? question? Before we round up. Anybody? Okay, then in the absence of that, I really want to thank everyone. I'm seeing hmm, some people here right now. First of all, first of all thank you. Mommy Olusonya and Daddy Olusonya, thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Femi, my darling uncle. And um, greetings to Auntie Ola too. My mommy, Mommy Agbola and my daddy. Hmm. I feel honored, sir. <laughs> thank you so much. And then I'm seeing, I don't know, is that Mommy Adi Oshun here? Because I'm not sure. Adi Oshun, Mommy Agbola. No. No, no, no. She's a colleague. Okay, another person, because I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Mrs. Adiosho Mobolanle. And then my beautiful family here also in the music ministry. Pastor Oye Bankole and Sister Mayowa Bankole. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my people from the UK, my brother David and Sister Janet. Always there. Right, Sister Janet, very active. Mm. That's one soldier for Christ that you must not miss. If you follow her on WhatsApp, a lot of stuff being posted by her. God bless you, ma. And uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Momiola Dunjoye. Thank you, Mrs. Bukunola Adegoke. That's my nick, my... I'm sorry, I'm learning German. Sometimes I forget English. I forget you, but I forget German safe. It's God will help me. Mrs. Bukunola Adegoke, that's my... My namesake, yeah, that's the English word. My namesake, yeah. Thank you, my darling friend from way back. Chiwa. <laughs> and then Alan Ogena, thank you so much. My twin sister. Thank you, Chibwa. thank you. <laughs> then my, my big sister all the way from Delta State. Eh? Sister Bola, mommy, mommy P. Thank you, ma. Then there's a um, mommy Gloria Sam. I'm sure that's from RCCG. Uh -huh, my beautiful sister, my only sister here in uh, Mama Twins. One of my beautiful sister here in G Germany, Mama Twins. Thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you so much, my yeah, my friend, all the way from the university days. Obala, Mr. Adechino. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Ola Dayo. Ola, Ola Dimeji. You and me, you talk now, you know. <laughs> then Bolaji, is it my Bolaji or which Bolaji am I seeing here? It's Bolaji Adara Nicho. Really? Okay. I don't know. I don't think so. It should be. <laughs> okay. Which of the Bolaji is that? I think so. Bolaji Adara Nicho. Ah. You are welcome. <laughs> well done. We'll talk later. I'm born <laughs> <laughs> then I can see um iPhone. I don't know who the iPhone is. There's um somebody whose name is Ade. Then there's Samsung. There's Akin iPhone too. Thank you all so much. I know some people have also logged out. Um, but that's our custom. We always thank each and every one, one thing at a time. And I want to say once again, is Brafem is still there? Oh, I think he's off too. If it's possible, Mommy Olusoya, I wouldn't mind if your message can be put together. If you don't mind, I would like to probably share them on platform or even compile them in a book. Yeah, Brafemi Brafem has sent his own. If you don't mind, Mommy, I can compile it together. Maybe just let it have wider coverage because it's actually a very beautiful topic and then the prayer point too mommy agola if it is possible for you ma we can also compile them together we share on platform if it's possible we'll probably have hard copies too where we can have a compilation of the abuse betrayal yeah she, she has looked at then we can compile we can compile this book together with your permission we can just um share to people because this one topic we don't just want to sweep under the carpets people don't ask questions People don't talk in public, but I can assure you, ma, these things are needed. Believe me, ma, these things are needed. Ah, my reverend, <laughs> Reverend Bola Denuga. Hmm. That's my mentor from, from my teenage years. Or that, no, not my teenage years. I think I was in my 20s when I met Reverend Bola. And when you say somebody gave you an opportunity in ministry to, to say, okay, this is where you can start. I give it to Reverend Bola. He gave me that pushing, and I thank God for him. Several years down the line now. Thank you so much, sir, for being who you are. So, Thank you very much. Ah, Mrs. Adekunle, you are here. Hmm. Okay, oh. You have not changed your name from Oyekomi. Who is giving you Oyekomi? After we have paid bride price, you are still behind Oyekomi. Ah. No, type error, type error. Okay, type error. Okay, please correct it. You are Adekunle, not Oyekomi. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, I want to say thank you all for joining. This is Rebecca Taylor. Thank you all so much. My darling friend in the UK too, Olushola, thank you. And thank you to my uncle too, eh? That is Simon. So thank you all once again, and we'll see you again next year. God bless you. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Okay, oh, bye. Bye bye. Ah, Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll uh, talk. <laughs> Ade Koya, God bless you. Amen, Revo. Thank you, sir. Amen, yes. sir. Bye bye. Yes, sir. What are you doing? Oh, mommy, family day. Thank you so much, ma. <laughs> You're back. Yeah. How are you making mommy? Thank you, ma. How is Daniel and Daddy? It's fine. They are fine. They are fine. Good. I didn't forget Daniel. <laughs> You're a guest again. <laughs> I'm hard. Ma, how are your kids? They are fine. But bless God, ma. They are. They are. They are good. God is faithful. Next year, God, you know, if Jesus tarries. Yeah. Yeah. By God's, by His grace, by His grace. And please, like I said. For those of us who want to listen to Oyemayo Banks, they have a channel. Please, Mark, can you please send it, send it once again into the chat room? To send it, yeah, but it's it's hop. Can you please um copy and paste? I don't know how to copy and paste. Too. Okay. Pastor, are you there, sir? Am I?
I'm as well even place it on my WhatsApp world so